Shalom Israel. Captain OC. I'm Senator. Today we're going to go into a very, very heavily debated topic in Israel and amongst the world. Hmm. Right. The question is, can you be a vegan and be an Israelite? Um, we're going to go into the scriptures and we're going to see because a lot of people have made this law. And we go, when we go into the scriptures, the Bible speaks very, very specifically on meats, specifically in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. Right. So we're going to examine those scriptures and we're going to see, is it lawful or not to be a vegan? All right, let's get Romans 15 and verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning. So understand. The basis of our conversation, the basis of our teaching, if you never watched us before, is we're going to use the Bible. The scriptures is what was given to us, the Israelites, to judge from. Right. Not the Internet, not Wikipedia, not an encyclopedia. We're going to use the Bible and the Bible only. Read. That we, through patience uh -huh. and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So, through the scriptures and through the things that were written aforetime, we're going to come to a conclusion on the question of whether or not if you can be a vegan. Right. So let's go to the beginning. What book better to start in than the book of Genesis? The beginning of all creation. All right. Read that. Genesis 1 and let's 29. So let's see where did we start off as far as eating. What were our eating habits in the beginning? The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Uh -huh. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb. I have what? I have given you. Every herb Read. bearing seed, uh -huh. which is upon the face of all the earth, uh -huh. and every tree, in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, Read. to you it shall be for meat. So, from the beginning, understand, from the beginning, what was given unto us for meat? The fruits and the herbs of the field, from right. the trees. That was was given to us for meat. So, we were born what? If you want to say, vegetarians. Right. Uh, omnivores, I think that's what it's called. All right, read. And, e and to every beast of the earth, uh -huh. and to every fowl of the air, Read. and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, uh -huh. wherein there is life, uh -huh. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So from the beginning, in the beginning, the humans on the earth were vegans, and the animals were vegans. Right. So, is that where it ends at? Is that where we stand today? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. Right. Is that still in effect today? Because a lot of people say, well, that's how it would start up. Now we got to get back to our roots. We right, got to get right, back to our coach. Right. And we understand that. But something else happened in the book of Genesis, too. When you read about the flood and Noah, something happened after that. Give me that in Genesis chapter 9. The book of Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. Uh -huh. Every morning thing, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Hold on. Start at verse, verse, verse 2. Verse 2. Genesis chapter 9, verse 2. Uh -huh. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth uh -huh. and upon every fowl of the air, uh -huh. upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Uh -huh. Into your hand are they delivered. Uh -huh. Every moving thing that, every moving thing, read. that liveth uh -huh. shall be meat for you. Oh, snap. So something hmm. changed. Something changed. Right. Read that again. Every moving thing what? Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Uh -huh. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. So, understand, the same way the herb was given unto you right. for meat in Genesis 1 is the same way the animals, the clean animals, because when you read Genesis chapter 7, it, it outlines which animals are clean right. and which animals are unclean. Those were given unto you for meat as well. Right. Now, did he say you had to eat it? No, he didn't say that. But understand, at that time, after the earth was flooded, well, there was not a lot of vegetation at that time. Right. So they had to use the animals to what? To eat, to stay alive. That was the way of life. Now, you'll never read again where he went back to saying that now that the earth is back at a normal state, you can't eat meat. Right. That was never instituted. We never want to make things up. But what we do read... Is which animals he made clean and unclean. He outlined it. Go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 46. And the fact that he outlined which animals were clean and unclean is showing you what? These animals were set up for you to eat. Right. Right? Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 46. Uh-huh. This is the law of the beast. This is the what? This is the law of the beast. Read. And the, of the fowl. Uh-huh. And of every living creature that moveth in the waters. Read. 
and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Read. To make a difference uh -huh. between the unclean to and the clean. To make a difference between the what? The unclean and the clean. Read. And between the beast that may be eaten. Uh-uh, this is the key part, you vegetarians. The beast that what? Between the beast that may be eaten. The beast that may be eaten. Read. And the beast that may not be eaten. So, God laid an outline of what animals you can eat and what animals you cannot eat. Right. Showing you what? That meat is lawful. It never said you had to eat meat. Right. And we're going to touch that on later. In certain instances, A, one certain instance when you do, but he never said you had to. But it is lawful. Right. Because a lot of people, are, are, are they, they walk around with this, and they make it a doctrine that you must be a vegetarian. Hmm. But that's not in the Bible. Right. So now let's deal with it. Let's deal with another issue. In the Christian church and in Israelites, they say that the meat is unlawful. Hmm. But the Bible outlines. We right. got we one step ahead of you. I'm going to show you where you at in the Bible. Use that, that, that make doctrines that are not written of in the scriptures. Right. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, uh -huh. giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Read. And doctrines of devils. And what? And doctrines of devils. And doctrines of devils. Devils, read. Speaking lies uh -huh. and hypocrisy, uh -huh. having their conscience seared with a hot iron, read. Forbidding to marry, uh -huh. and commanding to abstain from meat. And doing what? And commanding to abstain from and meats. And commanding to abstain from meats. Showing you what? A doctrine that tells you not to eat meat hmm. is going against what was written in a four time. Right. Because that's why he's writing this to the church. He's giving them what? Warnings. They're going to be people in the latter times that's going to tell you what? That you have to be a vegetarian. That you can't eat meat. Hmm. That the food is defiled. Right. Well, guess what? When you read the scriptures, all the prophets had to go through that. Right. We ate dung at one point during our captivity. Hmm. So where, where, where are you getting this understanding from? All right. Read. Which God had created uh -huh. to be received with thanksgiving. Hold on. So they telling you to abstain from meats, which God hmm. had what? Had created to be received with thanksgiving. See, that's the problem with y'all. Y'all didn't read the Old Testament. Right. We just read that in Leviticus chapter 46. This is the law of the fowls that can be eaten and may not be eaten. Right. That's why you must go precept upon precept, line upon line. Because we already had that understanding. Read the Old Testament. Then when you get the New Testament, it makes sense. Keep reading. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving uh -huh. of them which believe and know the truth. Read. For every creature of God is good uh -huh. and nothing to be refused. And nothing to be refused. So we're not saying that every single animal is to be eaten. Right. Goes back to the same thing we just read in the law. Read. If it be received with thanksgiving. Uh -huh. For it is sanctified by the word of God. What animals were sanctified by the word of God? You read about that in the book of Leviticus chapter 11. Right. Deuteronomy chapter four, uh, 14. Right. You find out what was sanctified by God. So did it say that you can't eat meat? Absolutely not. Do you have to be a vegan? Absolutely not. Now. Romans 14 and verse 1. Now are we ganging up on you on you vegans? Are we saying that you're wrong for eating vegetables? No. Absolutely not. I actually applaud you. Right. I think it takes a certain level of strength to live that lifestyle. But what we do uh, uh, warn you is that do not make it a doctrine that you can't eat meat because that is not scriptural. Right. Read that. The Romans 14. Of, the book of Romans chapter 14 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, uh -huh. but not to doubtful disputations. Read. For one believeth. That he may eat all things. One believeth that he may eat all things. The, the topic of this conversation is going into food sacrificed to idols and foods not sacrificed to idols. Right. Read. Another who is weak uh -huh. eateth herbs. Another that is weak eateth herbs. Because he said, you know what? I don't even want to worry about it. These, I, these idols, they, he thinks they have power. Right. Just like today. Guess what they say? They say, man, the food, all the meat is defiled. <laughs> right, right. It got, uh, what's the name of the stuff? Uh, uh, GMOs. GMOs right. All the, the, they got steroids, GMOs, so on and so forth. So right. it's the same situation today. You're weak. That's fine. But guess what? You're not wrong. It does have GMOs, steroids, and they have horrible housing for the animals. But what you're doing is you're making that law. Right. It's not written. That's why what? We're supposed to pray over our food. We just read it in 1 Timothy. If it be given with thanksgiving. Right. Read. 
For one believeth that he may eat all things. Uh -huh. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Another that is weak eateth herbs. Read. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth you not. You see that? That's what we. That's the issue that we've run into as Israelites. Read that scripture again. Let not him that eateth. Let not him that eateth. Meaning just because you eat meats, that don't make you better. Read. Despise him that eateth not. You see that? Don't despise the brother that does not eat meats. Right. That is a vegetarian. That understands the things that have happened to the uh, the foods today. That understand the foods. Found, you know, he says, you know what? I'm going to take a different route. Right. I'm going to make sure I, I try to enhance my health to the best of my ability. But understand, both of you individuals are doing lawful things. That's what our people have failed to understand. Right. As long as you both are abiding in the laws written in Leviticus chapter 11, you're good. So can you be a vegan? Yes. Can you be a vegan 365 days out of the year? No. Now we're going to address that. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Because a lot of people think just because they're vegan, now they can throw away the laws of God. <laughs> Understand, there is one day out of the year when whether you are vegan or not, you're going to bow down to the laws of God. Right. And we want to make sure you understand that. Read that. Let's the start book, at verse 6. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 6. Uh -huh. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. What happens on the 14th day of the first month? The Passover. Read. The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Uh -huh. And they shall take of the blood of, of it and strike it on the two side posts. Read. And on the upper door posts of the houses. Uh -huh. Wherein they shall eat it. And wherein they, what? Wherein they shall eat it. Read. And they shall eat the flesh. And they shall eat the, the what? And they shall eat the flesh. No, just the herbs. And they shall eat the flesh. And they shall eat the flesh. Understand, if you are a law-abiding Israelite, right. you're going to eat the flesh of the Passover lamb. Every year until Christ returns. Right. Read. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, mm -hmm. roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs yeah, but they the shall most eat I got you. it. He said, you're going to eat that flesh, and I got some bitter herbs for you as well. Right. So understand, the Most High God is a mastermind. He is a mastermind. One time out of the year, though, guess what? You must eat meat to be in accordance with God's laws. Right. So, to, to, to solve it up, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8. And like we said before, so now we went through the scripture. We showed you. That being a vegan is not unlawful. Right. Being a vegan is not unlawful. Just like eating meats is not unlawful. The problem that we've run into as Israelites is we try to establish both as law. And that is not written. All right, read that. The book of First Corinthians chapter 8 verse 8. Uh -huh. But meat commended us not to God. But meat commended us not to God. Meaning your eating habits is not going to get you closer to God. Read. For neither if we eat. Are we the better? Uh huh. For neither if you eat meats, are you better? Read. Neither if we eat not. Neither oh. if you eat not meat. Read. Are we the worse? Uh huh. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block. There you go. That's what's happened to us today. Our liberty of being able to eat or not eat meat has become a stumbling block to brothers. Because guess what happened? You come to a brother with the truth. You're teaching him who he is. You're teaching right. him his nationality. Hey, bro, you know you can't eat meat either. <laughs> hmm. Now, you already took away the pork. Right. Crab, lobster. <laughs> now you're telling this brother he can't eat a hamburger? Right. He, he's done. He's finished. You can't do that. Right. But that's what a lot of you Israelites have done. You're creating doctrines that are not written of in the scripture. Read that all the way through again. But take heed, lest by any means... This liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Uh-huh. Was that it on that? Yes, sir. So, make sure we don't set stumbling blocks amongst our brothers and sisters. So, once again, I'm Captain O.C. I'm Senator Thayer. Shalom. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites.
working so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.